Well, tonight I went to an event with Jennifer Garner um, and a bunch of other actors. Um, I forget American woman who I've worked on the set before, and she's brilliant, and she plays um, like her friend, who I believe works in the press or something. And I like to—I should know her name. I feel a little—I feel like I should know her name, and it's just. Anyways, um, I think I've worked on a set with her before. Um, but then there was a guy, the guy from Game of Thrones, the actor from Game of Thrones, um, who plays her husband who's missing. Um, it's an, it was an Apple Plus show. Um, the last thing he said, he told me, I think was what it's called. The writer was there, the producers were there. And I got really depressed at the end of it. Because all I kept thinking of, well, I'm never going to... Not that I wanted to be up there, because I didn't. Like, I wanted to be an actor, and I didn't want anything to do with People Magazine. I didn't want anything to do with the, quote, celeb like, the celebrity part of it. I just wanted to work and do my job and do the things I loved. And instead, I feel like... I feel like someone decided I wasn't privileged enough or important enough to be an actor. And because I wasn't, they needed to make me understand the fact. It's like I was getting special treatment at some point because I'd had cancer and I was in the, the PSA for standing to cancer. So now every time I go to these events, I have to expect the, the security to treat me like I don't belong there because of what SAG after did to me. And I feel like I've never attacked anybody. I've never hurt anybody. I worked on sets for five years, and but then I need to know that I'm not good enough or attractive enough or don't deserve to be with the privileged in the entertainment industry, and then I'm out even though I'm in, and I'm like, and if I'm out, I have nothing. It's like these guys come into my life in 2007, um, Michael Laverne and Lee Ryder show up on set, and... I feel like they had something to do with him, or my father. I mean, ironically, at, at Santa Monica College, Warren Heaton, this teacher I had, made some snide comments about his, how his father was a government agent or something, and how they wanted to make movie industry a family business. And I don't know why he made those comments, but it made me feel incredibly uncomfortable on some level, and I'm realizing, well, I wanted a family. I wanted kids of my own. I wanted... Um, a career in the entertainment industry. I wanted acting. I wanted to have a, I wanted a soulmate, best friend, husband, boyfriend, and was never allowed to find that person because all of a sudden people were trying to make me be the person my parents wanted me to be. They weren't accepting me for who I wanted to be. They weren't accepting me for who I am. It's like they were trying to make me be the person they thought I was, was when I was 18 years old or, and it's just been insane because I, hated my parents' church. I was never a Protestant or a wasp. I think it's ironic that someone was attacking me on Twitter, calling me a Trump supporter because I would never like someone like Donald Trump. Um, my, my parents would love if I ended up with a guy like Donald Trump. And I would be disgusted with myself. And I would be disgusted with the man in my life for being a greedy bastard who only cared about material things and money. And I wanted children but I kept that a secret because my parents were obsessed with me having children and I would not want my children to have anything to do with my parents because my parents are the kind of southerners who believe that women should be pure and at the same time should basically belittle women to be nothing because I'm not allowed to be smarter than my my father or smarter than anyone because I'm a woman I'm not allowed to be capable of anything because I'm a woman and I think I realized tonight I have nothing. I mean, I don't think that, I don't know if the people in the industry realized what they were doing when they did this to me or didn't care, or maybe they did because after all, I wasn't born going to a private school like the Menlo School, and I wasn't born with, with family, with money that could make movies like, like the woman who runs Annapurna Pictures. I mean, I look at the industry now and it disgusts me on some level because you have these privileged kids with money. And the very fact that I'm the one being attacked and I'm the one who people are trying to defraud and destroy when I'm like, do you understand the fact that I'm not a millionaire? 
I mean, I can't practice law because I'm not capable of being an attorney. I can't be a manipulative, ma maniacal, evil, I only care about cash kind of person. I never caused an accident on a set. I never even wanted to sue anybody for the accident. I just wanted to be on sets. Being on sets meant everything to me. It was the best years of my life. Working in the entertainment industry on set. I feel like my eyes are going crossed. Like, I think I have my contacts in though, and I'm really tired. Like, I feel like I look like my eyes are doing weird things. Um, but, yeah, they're doing weird things. I'm tired. Um, but, um, I'm just, I don't have anything. I mean, I have some friends who care about me. I know that on some level, but there's a part of me that's like, no, you don't care about me. I'm not moving from Los Angeles. I can't up and pick myself up and go somewhere else. I don't have a car anymore. I got rid of my car. I don't have savings. I don't have a million dollars in the bank. I live paycheck to paycheck. I don't even paycheck to paycheck because I haven't had a paycheck since 2010. You literally took away the only paycheck I had when you stopped me from working on sets. And then I've got this guy, crazy guy, Lee Ryder, who lives in Montana, thinking that I'm going to go out and be in the community and make lots of money and be able to give money to charity when I can't even pay my rent and I don't care about making the money because the only way I cared about making the money was being using the creative ideas in my head. I wanted to write poetry more than I care about writing a law brief. I want to finish my horror film script that's never going to be finished at this point because what's the point? Because the industry is going to want to cast someone like Jennifer Garner instead of casting me. And the hypocrisy of that just makes me sick. Because it, the reality of it is, if you're not beautiful and perfect, America doesn't care. I'm not allowed to be an actor because I'm not white privileged enough. And yet I was a Maryland Distinguished Scholar in Phi Beta Kappa and I never cheated on a test. I'm not perfect. I'm a mess. And, but I don't want a man in my life who's a mess. I don't want to deal with a man's crap. And I don't like women because women have stuck knives in my back. It's been a woman who's been trolling me and attacking me. A woman who wants everyone to think that I'm nasty. A woman who wants to continue that I'm a liar. Because I'm not blonde and beautiful like Alana Philo, who's dating Jer who's married to Jeremy Gilbert, has kids with a guy that molested me, and I told her to her face, I prefer men who are tall and, and blonde. And FYI, the youngest guy I've ever been involved with at all is a guy named Jordan Marks. And he was six feet tall, a lot taller than me and bigger than me. And he lied to me. But I have never been a pedophile. I don't, I think that's disgusting. I would never want to date someone who was a child. I would never want to date someone who's a lot younger than me. I wanted a best friend. I wanted good people in my life. And what really makes me angry and disgusted is that my value system is better than the people doing this crap to me. My sense of right and wrong is better. And I am especially tired of people who think that I don't know that they're treating me like crap. Who think that I don't know. I feel a lot of times like the grandmother in, or the grandfather in Lost Boys, who's very much aware of all the vampires out there, but has just accepted the fact that they're there and just wants to live. The only thing wrong with Sam Demas is all the damn vampires.